Hi, this is Mike Leahy at BookUp.com. I am going to assume for this video that you have already watched another video on how to use back solving in Chess Openings Wizard Professional. Here I'm using the test version, uh, the new Windows and Macintosh version. I'll be using the Windows version this time. They look exactly the same. Uh, but you can also do this in the current version of Chess Openings Wizard Professional. So, first of all, I get an email from Clyde Nakamura. It looks something like this. Well, actually, what he did was he sent me a file looks something like this. This is a PGN file. Uh, PGN stands for Portable Game Notation. I would guess this file was exported from Chess Space, but it could come from any chess program. The whole idea of Portable Game Notation is that it can be created and read by any chess program, including Chess Openings Wizard. Now, what Clyde was telling me in the email is he's very excited about this gambit that starts in the French. So after E4, E6, and then D4, E5, he plays knight f3, which, if you can imagine the position for a second, leaves the pawn on e4 hanging. And so black is definitely going to be tempted to play d takes e4. Then he's going to be, his knight's going to be hit, so he's going to play knight g5. And at this point, black's going to have to try something to hang on to that pawn. There are a couple different variations, for instance, f5. And you can see in PGN, it starts a variation by a parentheses in the knight f6. So a PGN file can be read by a human being and by a computer. This is a very specific format. So let me flip over to Chess Openings Wizard here for a second. And we're going to create a new ebook. And we'll call it Nakamura. There we go. The program creates a new ebook, and we can put those first few moves in. It's the French defense, so e46, d45. And then knight f3. And then he takes here, and he plans on playing knight g5. So what we want to do is we want to fill in the moves, not manually, not by reading that PGN file, we want to do it automatically. So we go to the PGN menu. Select Import Games, which is the only function in the current test version on Macintosh and Windows. But, of course, there are many more uh, functions on the current version of Chess Openings Wizard. But, again, the, the options in the menus are the same. And we want to find that PGN file. I have it tucked away in a test folder here. So I'll double-click on that. It comes up with the settings, and I'll just say, I won't highlight my novelties. Uh, novelties uh, are highlighted if they are new to the database, but just about every move is going to be new to this database, except these first four moves, or five moves. I'm just going to turn that off, and I'll put the game header in the last position's comment so I can see where it came from. Click OK, and it'll start importing. It'll take it a few seconds to rip through those games. There were 17 games in that file. Now we can see the lines from the games, and of course that first game we saw had f5 and a knight f6 as a comment. It also has h6 as a possibility here, and after f5, bishop c4, and then black has tried queen f6 and queen d6. Now we want to try back solving. What do you suppose is going to happen if I back solve all the data in this book? Let's find out. If I go to commands, back solve bring that window in so you can see it. And what we're going to do is we can solve numeric assessments, but there's no computer analysis in this one. We're interested in solving the informant rates, the, uh, the symbols, the informant symbols. We can also solve the accumulation of variations. Not going to worry about that either, but we'll leave them checked and start solving from the uh, starting position of chess. It'll take it a few seconds to get all of that back solved. Okay. Now, we have some of the lines ended up being back solved. Queen d6 is back solved as a win for black. Queen f6 is not yet back solved, so that's not very helpful. If I go back to the starting position of chess, one of the games started with d4, so it probably went d4, d5, e4, e6. It's going to transpose to the French. Um, we can check that out if we want. d4, d5, yeah, e4, e6. And then he still played knight f3. But we can't see any back solve information. I want to know the truth about all this analysis, as it were. I want to know. Is e4, or in this case d4, good for white or good for black in this gambit? And so some of the final positions are not analyzed. Well, let's click through and look at one of the positions that's not analyzed at the very end because back solving relies on that. So here, all these other variations are back solving nicely, but still d takes e4 and that whole family in here, not yet done after f5 or knight f6. Let's try the f5 lines. So bishop c4, let's try queen f6. So the queen d6 is solved as a win for black. And knight f6, knight c3 is the one that's not solved yet. Bishop e4. Let's just zip on down to the end of the line here. Click on the forward to branch point. So we get to this final variation. And it says uh, it was is plus minus uh, 3.06 in favor of white. So he said that's an easy one to fix. So we'll set that to a win for white. So now we've got a little bit more done. Let's go back to the last branch point. 
and see if there's another one. After knight c3, bishop b4, nope. This is all in that particular branch. So back to the last branch. If we go back to a prior branch, um, see if there's anything else there. Okay, oh, knight f6. Knight f6 has not been solved. And f3 and knight c3 are not solved. Now we can see we've got a little bit of work to do, right? We'd have to go down through all of these final positions and find all the leaf nodes, the nodes at the ends of this tree of analysis, and there could be many, dozens, hundreds, I don't know. Um, we have to go find them and give them an assessment so that back solving can work from the final position. The ones that are from the results of the game are working just fine, but the ones from the analysis are not necessarily automatically set unless he put informant symbols in the comments of his original chess base file, which it doesn't look like he did in every case. Sometimes he just made one of those little comments saying what Fritz had to say. Well, that's no good. I mean, because comments are human readable, we need this. Com we need this symbol set inside the database. So, how are we going to go find all those? Let's say we imported, say, hundreds or thousands of games, and there could be then thousands of leaf nodes that need analysis, or maybe hundreds. Maybe most of them are, are assessed correctly because of their final position of a game, but there's still so many that we need to find. It would be a task to do that. So, what we have is a feature in the commands menu called find leaf nodes and we can go find leaf nodes and give them names and then we can go right to that list of names one at a time check them off go directly to those positions and assess them so we can uh, not going to overwrite any existing names we'll call it uh, everything with blank rates and we're going to find only positions without informant rate symbols that's the guy we're after right there find only positions without informant rate symbols and we're going to start with position number one. So it's going to make a name for it. The first one it finds is going to call blank rates one, and then it'll make blank rates two, blank rates three. Let's find out how many there are. So we'll click OK. It hunts to the database. It found nine of them. Perfect. So now we go to the Go menu. We can go back to jump to the starting position of chess. That works fine, and it's still not back solved, of course. We can say go to jump to board name. This window has a list of all the board names. Just like I said, blank rates 001 through 009. So let's jump to the first one. And this is white to move. It says black has a one position. My queen and bishop cannot do much. So if black has a one position, we'll set this to winning for black. And let's go to the uh, jump to board name. Jump to number two. Okay, this one's white to move. Evaluation negative 312. So we're saying this is probably good for black, right? Okay, look, does it look good for black? Looks like black has a couple extra pawns and he's hanging on here, so we'll assume that's correct. Also, win for black. And let's see, let's go to board name number three. Okay, white is down a rook, should be lost. So this is also a win for black. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I'll just stop the video here and I'll go and assess all these other positions. And we'll come back when I'm all done. Okay, I got all our final positions analyzed. Let's stop. Jump back to the starting position of chess. Oh, now I need to go because I jumped a position. What am I saying? Jump to starting position of chess. There we go. So now, if we do commands, back solve, and press OK, and let it rip through all those leaf nodes we just analyzed again. Notice the blank rates is now set to zero, so it found no positions with blank rates. Let's see what we got. Now it looks like uh, it's actually winning for black. So as much as we'd like to play this gambit, it looks like with correct play from black, yeah, black's going to still come up on top. So let's uh, find out what the critical line was. After knight f3, it looks like uh, after d e4, if knight f6, then, then white's going to get an advantage here, evidently. Uh, but after d takes e4 and then knight g5, if he tries knight f6 or h6, all the lines show that with best play for both sides again in back solving, uh, white's going to have a winning advantage. But if, if f5, how tricky is it? After bishop c4, it looks like the more natural, I would think, queen f6 still has lines winning for white, and the critical line is queen d6. That's the one that keeps the advantage for black. Let's go zip out to the end and see how this game actually ended. Sure enough, so only one game actually ended this way, and all the other variations and all the other lines were actually good for, for uh, white. So that's how we found what we'll call the truth in this particular PGN file. 
Hopefully you're using back solving as the power tool that it is. And if you have any questions about back solving, definitely get in touch with me. Email me at mike at bookupmembers.com or get online in the help system. Thanks for watching.